chapter 32 starts with a basic circuit. We just look at a battery and a resistor and a switch. This is at time t is less than zero. At time t is equal to zero, we are going to close the switch. And so it is going to look like this. Time t is greater than or equal to zero. So we close the switch. Now, this means current is going to be flowing. That is the direction of the current in the circuit. Pull out our right hand. We point our thumb in direction of the current, for example, here. Our thumb points to the left, our fingers curl. This means that the magnetic field caused by the current flowing through here is into the board above the wire and out of the board below the wire. If you do this all the way around, you'll discover that inside the loop, you get a magnetic field that is into the board. Outside of the loop, you get a magnetic field which is into the board. Which means we go from initially having zero flux to now our magnetic flux is into the board and increasing. So that means that there is an induced magnetic field. What is the direction of that induced magnetic field, John? Um. According to electromagnetic inertia, the tendency to keep the magnetic flux the same. Out. out. In order to try to cancel this out and keep the magnetic field at zero, the magnetic flux at zero, the induced magnetic field is going to be out. In other words, the induced current that is going to cause this induced magnetic field, which is out, notice, is counterclockwise. There is an induced current in the circuit which is opposite the direction of the current in the circuit. In other words, when you flip the switch, there is a built-in resistance to the change in the current. And this concept is called self-inductance. It's a built-in, in any circuit, there is a self-inductance, a resistance to a change in the current. And it is determined by geometry. Notice how this would be determined by the geometry of this specific shape. Now, the, sh the shapes of the various items are go always going to be different. So we need to deal with that when we're talking about the concept of self-inductance. OK. Faraday's law of induction was the uh, induced EMF is equal to the negative of the number of loops times the derivative of the magnetic flux as a function of time. We know magnetic flux is equal to B A cosine theta, and we know the magnetic field around the current carrying wire is equal to, we've already defined it, U, mu naught I over 2 pi A, just for the magnetic field from an infinitely long current carrying wire, right? Just to give an example. Which means that the self-induced EMF is proportional to the derivative of the flux but that's the proportional to the change in the current. In other words, the induced EMF is proportional to how the current is changing. Because it's how the current is changing that causes the magnetic field to change, which causes the flux to change. And the way it looks is this. The EMF, the self-induced EMF, is equal to negative L times di dt where L is the inductance. Generally, when we're talking about inductance, we talk about a specific thing called an inductor, which is generally in the shape of a coil. So L is the inductance of the coil. Generally, this, I used this as a, as a very basic example, but usually when we're talking about uh, self-inductance, we usually refer to it as a coil, a solenoid type of item. So, let's take a look at this. Um, well, the 
That means that they're both EMF, so we get negative L di dt is equal to negative n times the derivative of the magnetic flux as a function of time. The negatives cancel out, and we can also uh, take the integral of both sides, get rid of the dt's, and we get L di is equal to n times the derivative of the, mag or derivative of the magnetic flux. And you can see L and N are just constants, so when you take the integral of both sides, we get L times I is equal to N times the magnetic flux. In other words, the self-inductance is equal to N, the number of turns, times the magnetic flux, divided by the current. If you solve this equation, you can also get that the self-inductance is equal to the negative of the EMF, divided by the derivative of the current as a function of time. Dimensions on self-inductance. Dimensions on self-induction. Please walk through it, Nick, for me. The IDT, amps per second. This is, so it works out to be volts times seconds per amps, which has a name, we call it Henry. <laughs> I know, I was excited, but we lost Henry. So we have a new dimension, it is number of Henry's, and it is the concept of self-inductance. So just a note, we have the concept of resistance. Resistance is equal to the electric potential difference divided by the current. Resistance is a resistance to current, right? It's a resistance to the current in the circuit. Now, we also have this equation for self-inductance, which is equal to negative times the EMF over di dt. So this, self-inductance, is a resistance to a change in current. Very different things. Self-inductance is a resistance to a change in current, to how the current is trying to change. If the current is not changing, it's, there's no resistance to that. 